Before starting our figure eight healing, we want to make sure that our dog, first of all, knows leash pressure. They understand power steering and you've done the left about turn as well as the right about turn. Then we're ready to do, or then we're ready to start our dog on figure eight healing. When I'm doing figure eight healing, first I'm gonna start off with some cones. Cones make it a lot easier because it's not somebody standing there. When you compete and you actually do figure eight healing, your dog is going to have to go around people and that's gonna make it much more difficult. But for this video and for these training purposes, we're gonna be using a cone but as your dog gets better and they really get good at doing the figure eight with the cone, you're gonna wanna practice with some people as well. Get your dog used to doing the figure eight with people there. So what we wanna do, and this is what a lot of people run into. First of all, we wanna start to where we're in the center of both the cones. The cones are gonna be eight feet apart. Then when we step out, first we wanna to go to the one on our left side. When I go to that one, when I'm first doing this, I'm doing it nice and slow and I'm doing it with the power steering or I'm helping my dog with the leash. For this, the dog has to understand that they need to slow down because you're gonna have to go a farther distance. They're gonna be going a shorter distance because they're on the inside at this point. So as we go around, they have to know to slow down their pace while you stay at the same pace. They have to adjust to your speed. So we wanna go around, we can help them with the power steering. That's gonna be one way to do it. Or we can do it by having the leash behind our back and we're gonna, we're gonna go around that cone, guiding the dog and really getting them to understand how to maintain that position and rewarding them along the way. If I notice my dog is starting to go too far ahead of me, what I can do is I can add a little bit more pressure to the leash and I can spin in one position and then go back into the left about turn. That's really gonna get them to be aware of where you are and to understand how to hold that position correctly as you're doing the left cone. Then you're gonna come back around and now after you finish the left cone, you're gonna be going around the right cone. When you come around the right cone, now your dog is on the outside and you're on the inside. So in order for your dog to maintain heel position, they're going to have to speed up because now they're traveling a farther distance. So often what I'll do is as I'm guiding the dog, I might use my terminal marker and I'll, I'm gonna have them go forward quickly to get that piece of food. So they're gonna be going around the cone, use my terminal marker, they're gonna jump forward to get the food. Or I'll just speed them up really quick or maybe even spin in place. And I'm gonna do this over and over again. But first, let's go through it. Let me show you exactly how you guys are gonna do this to really get that figure eight healing. And as we come back around, we're gonna to wanna to stop and halt because you have to do a halt next to one of the individuals that are standing there for your figure eight. So you wanna start working that as well when you're doing the figure eight exercise. So make sure you have a good automatic sit when halted before you start to do this exercise. Okay, so we're gonna do the figure eight with Charlie here. We wanna get our dog in heel position. We want to be center with the cones, but not in between them. So right before them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say heel. And you're going to want to step to your left, not your right. The reason for this is if you step to your right, they're going to have you go around this cone. It's going to be a person though. Around this one. And then they're going to have you go around this one again. And then they're going to have you stop right here. So break, you're gonna make yourself walk a much farther distance if you choose to go to your right. Because if you go to your left, you're gonna go around this one, around that one, and then they're gonna halt you there instead of doing that extra loop. So you wanna make sure you start off going to your right. Now remember, as we talked about before, when we're going around the cone on our left, your dog is gonna be doing a shorter distance. So as they're going, they have to slow down to wait for you. If they go the same speed, they're gonna end up forging. So you wanna be aware of that. And then when you're coming around this cone, they're gonna go a farther distance, so they have to speed up. So when I'm doing this exercise, heel, I like using the power steering to show my dog to maintain that tight position. And then around this cone, I will speed them up and make it like a little race to get to the other side of the cone. So again, this one they slow down, and this one they speed up. So we speed them up, good. And I like to get them used to going around that corner much faster than normal. Good boy. So again, we go around this cone, we pick up the speed, 
Nice. And sometimes if I have a dog that has a tendency to forge right here, what I might do is I'll do a reverse spin or I'll spiral in. I'll show you what I mean. Same with this one. I'll come around and I'll spin really quick in position and then go back into my heel. And then when I come into the left side, I'm gonna spin in position right here and go back into the walk. And that's gonna help teach my dog to maintain proper heel position as we're doing the figure eight. Because what can happen right here, they can start to forge. If you don't do it correctly and you don't do enough of reps, and here, they can start to lag. See how he's lagging? And we don't want that. We want him to stay next to us. So it's gonna take a lot of repetition if you're using this reward-based training technique and using our power steering to really get them to understand to go in front of you. Even if I have to cut across like that. Just for training, it's gonna be okay. So we come around and we pick up the speed freak. Good, get them to rush forward to get that food. Get them to slow down. Good job, buddy. We also wanna practice Good. Our halts as we come up to the cone. Yes. Yes. Heel. Good. Getting them to slow down, maintaining that position nicely, and then speeding up around that cone. Heel. Step off. And here, our dog needs to slow down. Good girl. And on here, they need to speed up. So I might even take off. I want her to anticipate picking up the speed over there. Good girl. So here, slow down. Nice, beautiful turn. Girl. So she needs a little help on that right about turn. Come on, I. There we go. She's already starting to fix herself. Free. That's gonna be the picture that we want. And I developed this using the exact technique you saw that I was implementing on Charlie. Let me show you how we can do this as well using pressure-based training using that leash pressure. So for the left, we can keep the leash behind our back, heel. So when we step off, we can use it to kind of control their position a little bit using that leash pressure. Good girl. Very nice. And then when we come back around, switch it to the right side, keeping them tight, and then using that pressure if I need to, just to guide them and make it as clear as possible. Some people will even do this with two leashes, one in the front and one in the back. Good girl. You wanna switch sides, get over there real quick? Mm -hmm. Jill. Really taking the dot, the really taking the time to develop the leash pressure skill for your dog and following the leash will help a great deal with a lot of these exercises. So again, heel, we step off, I keep the leash behind my back and I can use a little bit of tension if I need to, to get her to maintain that position. Same when I come around here. If I need to, I can pull a little bit just to get her to come forward. And I'm only doing as much as what is necessary to get her to do it correctly. I don't want to be pulling her the whole way. You see, it's loose for the most part. And then if I need to, I can guide her a little bit. But the leash isn't getting really tight. It's just there to use as a tool to help my dog get the position and to really understand it in the most clear way possible. The more clear you are communicating with your dog, the faster they're gonna learn these more complex exercises.